有着四十七年历史的全球知名的连锁咖啡品牌星巴克呢，它标志性的 logo 是美人鱼，在北京和上海等等城市几乎是随处可见的。上班的路上呢，手捧一杯星巴克咖啡，曾经一度成为了中国城市白领的标志之一。那目前呢，星巴克在中国的一百三十九个城市开设了三千两百多家门店，有四万多名雇员，每周呢接待六百多万消费者。一方面，从没有停止过品牌扩张的道路；而另一方面呢，星巴克也看重全球乃至中国高端咖啡市场的机遇。二零一四年，星巴克在西雅图开设第一家高端的咖啡店，甄选烘焙工坊，旨在为消费者提供全沉浸式的咖啡体验，并且计划呢未来在全球开到二十到三十家门店。那么去年底呢，星巴克首家的海外甄选烘焙工坊在上海开业了。星巴克的全球 CEO 凯文·约翰逊出席开业仪式时表示，上海的甄选烘焙工坊是星巴克的创新中心，咖啡、体验式零售、数字化。三大战略都将在这家店里得到体现。今年五十七岁的约翰逊呢，曾在微软任职多年，管理着全球销售和市场营销。二零一五年呢，加入星巴克担任首席运营官。二零一七年四月份的时候呢，他接任了星巴克传奇 CEO 霍华德·舒尔兹，成为了新一任的星巴克 CEO。那么在接受财新时间专访的时候呢，约翰逊强调，中国市场整体增长强劲，这让星巴克有信心继续扩张，触及更多城市的。So what are opportunities and challenges for both markets? Well, certainly China is a very important、uh, market for us. We have been in China since 1999, and so over that 18-year period, we've really worked to make sure that we、uh, that, that as we've built our business, we do it in a way that has cultural affinity to the people of China. We do it in a way consistent with our brand and with our values. And we're now at a point after 18 years where we are now at 3,000 stores、uh, in China, and in the process of doing that, we have over 40,000 Starbucks partners who proudly wear the green apron in China, and we've really worked hard to make sure we take care of our partners, whether that's through healthcare benefits or、uh, our bean stock, or even the most recent、uh, benefit that we announced, which was.、Uh, Uh, uh, parental insurance、uh, for partners with aging parents, and so that has carried us over the last 18 years.、But、if you look at the opportunity ahead, the roastery really is an inflection point for us. It is an inflection point for us to accelerate our growth, and、uh, we see so much opportunity for us to continue to build beautiful stores, continue to hire great partners, and take care of those partners, and create something that is a warm, welcoming environment for all of our customers. Do you see any changes in the past 18 years since Starbucks came into China? Well, I think we're constantly changing. You know, I think the 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 thing that's I think really special about Starbucks is that we continue to reinvent ourselves. We we continue to imagine the possibility of new experiences and new things, and I think this roastery is an example of that. You know, we're here and it's over 30,000 square feet, and it's got everything from the The experience of seeing how coffee is roasted, to how it's packaged, to the the bars with all the different、uh, brew methods for coffee, the tea bar. We've got it paired with chocolate, beers, wines. So this is an example of the the innovation and the imagination that really is core to Starbucks, which means we are constantly reinventing ourselves, constantly changing. So if you look at that 18-year journey since we've been in China, we've constantly been on a journey. To reimagine and reinvent and create something that we think is special, and that's part of sort of woven into the fabric of the Starbucks culture. China is Starbucks' growth rate is the fastest in the market. For two years, it is growing at a rate of 500 units per hour. At present, it can open up every 15 hours. According to Starbucks' announced 2018 financial results, the sales of Starbucks in China exceeded 100 million units per hour. Compared to the rate of global sales, the sales of Starbucks in China exceeded 100 million units per hour. Compared to the rate of global sales, the sales of Starbucks in China exceeded 100 million units per hour. 星巴克的董事会主席舒尔兹此前也曾经表示过，美国市场在两千年呢是有三千家店的，那么用十七年的时间发展到了一万家，而中国的发展速度呢只需要美国的一半，因此推算在二零二六年前后，中国呢也将拥有一万家的星巴克门店。
。这一数字呢，将接近连锁快餐品牌，像是麦当劳、肯德基还有必胜客，在中国三十多年来的店铺的数量总和，实在可以说是令人惊叹。And we know Starbucks will have 5,000 stores in China in by 20, uh, 2021. Now you already have 3,000. How do you prepare for it? Well, I think clearly we we believe that、uh, when we look at the the number of customer visits that we have in our stores, we have over five million customer occasions a week in China in our stores. Five million. Five million, and you know if we look at if that globally, we have 95 million customer visits a week. Into our stores globally, but five million here in China, and so clearly the、uh, experience that we create in our stores is something that、uh, that our Chinese customers enjoy, and we continue to see very strong growth in the number of those customer visits. So by building more stores, it allows us to continue to, to expand our reach to reach more and more customers, and do it in a way that's consistent with all the things that have helped us get to the point、uh, where we are today with over three thousand stores. So we see, you know, a significant growth opportunity ahead for Starbucks in China. Well, we've already grown with our with the 3,000 stores. We have a presence in 136 cities throughout China, and so,、uh, you know, we're very thoughtful about about、uh, when we enter into a city, the types of stores that we design, and how we do it in a way that really connect、uh, with the with the consumers in that particular city. And so, I think with、uh, you know the way that、uh, Shanghai has evolved just over the last decade. And you look at how China is changing; it's just so important for us to continue to, to expand that presence into more cities and more stores, but do it in a way that is based on the learnings and all the things that have gotten us to the point that we are today. Do you worry about the brand will be diluted or outdated if there are thousands of Starbucks in China? It means everywhere there is Starbucks. Well, if you think about the fact that we've grown to,、uh, you know, about 28,000 stores around the world. And even with 28,000 stores around the world, we are building、uh, something like this: the Starbucks Reserve Roastery,、right. which、That's、is in many in, in many ways there's only one in China, and it is really the pinnacle of、uh, the the coffee wonderland of、uh, of experience for all customers. And so, I think the more we differentiate on our stores and continue to do things like this uh, Starbucks uh, Reserve Roastery here in Shanghai, that's going to continue to elevate the brand. And continue to keep the Starbucks brand fresh and vibrant in the community、uh, here in China. Who do you think is the biggest competitor in China? In China well,、market? you know, it, there are lots of, of places that sell coffee and tea, but we think you know the experience that we create and the beautiful stores that we design. You know, we think we provide something that's very unique, and so you know, it's difficult for me to point to, to a competitor that we think does exactly what we do. But I, you know, I acknowledge there's a lot of places you can buy coffee or, or、right. tea in China. But we think it is the combination of the beautiful store design, some of the world's、uh, finest coffees and teas, and our partners. In many ways, it's our partners in the stores that really connect with our customers and create that great Starbucks experience for every single customer that walks in our door. Another thing is the average salary in third tier and fourth tier cities are kind of lower than Beijing and Shanghai. Will you consider to lower price if it could boost your sales? Well, you know, certainly we're in the business of providing a great customer experience, and, and you know, we're constantly looking at price. And you know, we've had a very consistent price throughout China, and it's it's really helped us、uh, expand. And, and we're always thoughtful about making sure that、uh, that the prices we charge、uh, that we think those are、uh, commensurate with the experience we create for our customers. And it seems to be working. We're very careful about、uh, about pricing, both price increases and lowering price. I think. You know, part of the reason we charge what we charge is because we want to make sure that we pay a, a very good wage to our our Starbucks baristas, our partners. We provide them health care, and so much of what we do is ensuring that we have the right kind of value proposition for our customers, and that we charge a price that's a fair price for them, but also the kind of price that allows us to take care of our people, to take care of our partners. You know, and and you know, I think as you point out, we also have a big part of building our brand is our social impact agenda. We are now contributing、uh, 20 million U.S. dollars、uh, to our social impact fund here in China, to be really invested over the next five years around social impact、uh, efforts that relate to creating opportunities for people in China,、uh, strengthening communities、uh, in, in community work in China, and even working on、uh, sustainability of coffee with the Yunnan farmers. And so. The reason we charge the prices we charge is to create the experience we create, to take care of our partners, 
and also to give back to the communities that we serve. 那么一方面呢，星巴克在中国保持高速扩张的业务策略；另一方面呢，也延续着它一贯的社会责任实践，包括像是组织员工和志愿者参与社区服务，与国内的公益机构合作，开展外来务工妇女职业培训、青年领导力发展等等这样的项目，以及呢，资助了高校的贫困学生等等。二零一七年的年底，星巴克宣布，在未来的五年当中呢，星巴克基金会以及星巴克中国计划要在中国呢投入一点三二亿元人民币，用于启动和开展一系列可持续性的社会公益项目，携手相关的社会公益组织还有基金会，希望能够帮助到弱势群体，也助力精准。The balance between the social impact and your financial performance is right. very fragile. Yes. If you have to pick one from both, which one? Well, I think the key is we we try to we try to do both, and we think the two are related,、mm -hmm. uh, and they're related in the following way. You know, if we pay,、uh, if we reward and take care of our partners in a good way, our partners we have longer tenure of our partners. We have less turnover of our Starbucks partners, and that means we can do a better job of connecting with customers. When we invest in social impact,、uh, many times that's a way to, to demonstrate that we care about the communities that we operate in, and we care about doing、uh, the right thing to create opportunities and sustainability、uh, around the world. And so the two things are related. Oftentimes, customers want to do business with a company that they think has positive social impact beyond just just doing commerce. And so the two attributes are related. Now, certainly, there's a balance there. We have to make sure that we're being thoughtful about the investments we make,、uh, our cost base,、uh, the prices we charge. But I think we've,、uh, you know, over the last 18 years in China, and after over the last、uh, 47 years、uh, since Starbucks was founded, I think we found a, a very good way to、uh, to balance something that, as you point out, is a very delicate balance. 那作为传统零售企业的代表呢，星巴克近年来呢也在探寻互联网加零售的新业务模式，致力于使消费者的消费体验更加的方便跟快捷。从开通手机的下单服务，接入了微信支付、支付宝、Apple Pay 等主流移动支付方式，到在微信平台上推出社交礼品体验小程序“用心说”，再到启用了咖啡自动烘焙流水线，改善了供应链体系，还有这个库存的管理。星巴克呢，正在加速应用移动技术以实现品牌的数字化战略。How does new technology change the coffee industry? Well, if you think about technology, in a lot of ways, we the technology that's customer facing is changing the way we interact with our customers. Whether that's for mobile payments, social gifting, mobile ordering, you know, even new things around delivery,、uh, we've been we've been ex experimenting with. But technology is also applicable within Starbucks and within the coffee company. You know, we,、uh, for example, when we design a store like this, we now take those those drawings, the the CAD drawings for that store, and we load them into virtual reality.、Wow. So before we deploy capital to build a store like this, our store designers can actually build a store, create a virtual reality environment of it, put the headset on, and walk a virtual store、you、before we ever build it. You can see it in your U.S. office. That's right. You know, we're using technology to help、uh, to help us with supply chain, help us with inventory management.、Uh, certainly, technology is helping us get closer to、uh, to the to origin, where coffee farmers grow all these wonderful coffees. So, technology plays a very big role in our business. So, technology is a big part of what we do, but we're really focused on creating an immersive、uh, experience, retail experience around all things coffee. And the technology is a complement to that. The things that are important to us: number one is, can we create、uh, a retail experience that attracts customers to our stores, and can we extend that experience from the brick and mortar experience to a digital mobile experience for our customers?、And、so those are the two、uh, pillars that we've really focused on. Will we see some auto service, self-service Starbucks in some days? Well, look, a big a big part of what we do is our baristas. Create beautiful handcrafted beverages made specifically for for you. So that customization and the personal crafting of those beverages is a part of what we do. Now we do address the need state of convenience. You know we've we've enabled things for mobile ordering or social gifting. So we're always going to find ways to make that experience more convenient and more accessible to our customers. 
But I think a big part of this is the fact that we have wonderful Starbucks partners that handcraft each and every beverage for our customer. So robots can't do that, right? That's right. Robot can't do that. Robots can't replace the human experience. And you just mentioned the social gifting, as gifting on WeChat several times. So how's it going in China? Well, I think it's it's been quite phenomenal the adoption of giving That's a right. social gift. And you know, the thing that I think uh, people appreciate is that you know, giving giving a, a Starbucks gift is something that is is inexpensive, and that everyone will enjoy. And so uh, I think that. Uh, in a lot of ways, I think the innovation and the pace of innovation that we're seeing in China is, is exceeding that that we see in other parts of the world. And social gifting and what we've done with Tencent around WeChat is a great example of that. If you look at the number of people in China that are digitally connected and that use these technologies to communicate with their friends, with their colleagues, with their family, you know, I think the use of social, social networking is, uh, you know, with WeChat as an example, it's just one of many examples, is sort of woven into the fabric of how many uh, Chinese uh, consumers communicate with one another. What does future Starbucks look like? It's about elevating the experience, but doing it around all things coffee and tea. And you see our Tivana bar, our, our coffees, our reserved coffees. Um, but I think the, the, you know, the two or three things that are always going to be core to what we do the first one is around human connection, that we want to create a, a beautiful store that's a warm, welcoming place for all our customers to come and connect. We're going to constantly reimagine and reinvent, but we're trying to create something that creates a wonderful experience for our customers. And so we will evolve and we'll innovate around the beverages we offer, the brew methods we, we, we bring to the table, uh, the merchandise we create, and the ex ultimate experience that we create for our customers.